Hey, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome back to Beginning Maya 2015. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the clock here. Um, so, today we are going to go back to our polygon model, go ahead and open it up, and we're going to go ahead and learn more about rendering and how to add color to our models or textures, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so first problem that we had here is you notice that here we have a rounded, that this is the smooth model. And this is our first problem, is that in order to add color to this particular model, we need to select the faces of this thing. And you notice that, wow, there are a lot of faces to select. So now if we were back to where we had, you know, um, the single, just like the square version, which we can't anymore, this is a square version, which there's not too much difference, that now we have to select all these. So what you learn from this right now is you cannot unsmooth it um, for at least I don't think you can. Yeah, so you can. From what I know, you cannot. Okay, so um, so here's a smooth model. All right, so the one thing that you need to put, take away from here is that it doesn't matter on this one. We can still work with this one. But uh, what you want to do is you want to work with just the polygon uh, square and then save your versions. So save it right before you smooth it. So you should have... With this one, you should maybe have two to three versions just in what you did right now. So like every 15 minutes or every um, stepping stone that you hit, you should save that version, save that scene. So you go file, save as, and you put a separate name on it. So here, Polygon Spaceship, and it will say like Polygon Spaceship Smooth. So there, now you have another version, right? So now you would have had a version unsmooth and a version smooth. So later on it would be something that's rigged or colored, you know, before color, after color, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, that right there will serve as before color. So let's go ahead and save that and say polygon ship before color or whatever. And let's go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, rendering editors and, type and hit hypershade. And what you'll get is you'll get a little guy like this. Let me go ahead and open it up. And this is where we could add different colors. Now let me show you a, a, an option. Go to Attribute Editor. This is where we're finally going to use the Attribute Editor. And we could click on this. Oh, and if you hit Minimize, it shows up down there where your timeline would have been. You see it like it's minimized there at the bottom left corner of Maya. Now if you notice that if we change this color, it changes everything. Because that's the stock color that everything is assigned to. So what we're going to do first is let's just assign some new shaders. Let's do like a, uh, let's do a Fong, which is shiny. So Lambert's a uh, solid flat color. Fong is slightly shiny, like a shiny plastic. Then we have Blin, which is really, really shiny. And those are the three that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and assign a Fong to it. So let's go ahead and go into the color, and we're going to change some of the color options of this Fong. And you can change the name up here if you want. It doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and change it to like a like a light blue or something. Like somewhere around there. And you can change different stuff, add transparency, incandescent, you know, make it a little uh, shiny from the inside or whatever. Diffuse, you know, have stuff shining from the inside, whatever. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go back to the model and assign the faces. So as you see here, it's pretty hard to assign one face at a time. But the good thing for us is that um, this gives me a chance to show you guys a new option, which is here. This is the uh, paint select tool. Now what it allows us to do Oh, by the way, B is B and then the left mouse scrolling. So you hold B and left mouse scrolling changes the size of the paintbrush. We could, oops, you're going to right click and hit face 
And now this allows us to paint our face selection very, very quickly, as you see here. Also, another option, double click this and click, um, where is it? It's under stroke, click reflection. So you double click this and hit click reflection so that, ooh, it's not really reflecting the right direction. I want to reflect it about. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to reflect it about the, the X. And then we'll just go ahead and close this guy. And you see here that we're equally shading in on both sides. And if you hit control and then you select, it deletes instead of adding. And then remember you, oops. And remember you can hold B and change your brush size. And then we're going to just go ahead and unselect this guy. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so there's our selection there. So let's go ahead and go into Hypershade. And now you're going to right click the Fong and hit Assign Material to Selection. And bam, you can see that it has already taken effect. And we now have a two separate colors set on this. And now if you see this material, which is called a material, right? It's not a actual like, there's like materials, there's shaders, and there's textures, as you see all this stuff over here. Textures and materials. Some textures is like, you know, pictures or stuff you paint or whatever. So uh, we're, let's go back into a tribute editor. And what we're going to do is, what you could do with this is you could change the color and it's linked to that assigned material, to where you assign that material. So very, very helpful in this case. Now let's go ahead and do a couple other things. For example, actually let me turn, you could also do the same thing, go into stroke, where is it at? Oh, this one's got soft select. Should I have a? Should I have reflection? Okay, I'm just not seeing the reflection. So let's go back to paint. and paint where, actually sorry, I messed up. So if you notice right now, if you go in here and let's say you want, you selected another um, Fong or like a Lambert, let's go with like a Fong. You'll notice that uh, it gets rid of your, your, um, your selection. So make sure that you have, so let's call these like thrusters. So this is like thrusters and then let's go ahead and turn this into like a bright red like that and then we'll turn up like the incandescent make it like pretty shiny you know, make it bounce off the ambient color and then let's go ahead and select our material again and it's selecting on both sides and let's go ahead right click assign material alright so there it's it's alright it's not the best but you know I guess we kinda gotta deal with that and then what we could do is I would just leave this guy assigned to the standard one so now everything else we haven't selected we can now just change so for example if I wanted like a black even though black in this case does not have any like there's okay well, well let's go into we got it for the most part to kind of be, you know, how we want it to be. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to object mode. And so now we got like a black stealth bomber. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's change this black a little bit. Let's give it, you know, some ink, maybe like just a little bit incandescent, make it a little bit shiny. 
and uh, give it maybe not so dark, like a grayish, like a matte black. All right, so now what we're gonna do is a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, more of a rendering thing. So what we're gonna do is you just go into create and do a, a, a light ambient light. And what we're gonna do is, is oopsies, we're just gonna pull this guy up. And what that allows us to do, it allows us to light our scene, but you probably want to drop the intensity to like six. And so I'm doing this by clicking on the light. So now when we now when we hit render, you see a little bit of light in the scene. But you know our color is so boring. This black. Let me see what else we got. So let's do like a. Uh, yeah, let's do like a fire red or something. Yeah, you see here that it's very, very boring to have a flat color. You kind of need, you know, some paint, or you, you kind of need to paint in a texture, you know, or like mud box or something to get kind of a better effect. But uh, we'll go with this right now. So let's go ahead and change some of the render globals to increase the resolution of our renders. And this is kind of more away from modeling. This is going into like, you know, the rendering engine, but it's pretty fun to mess around with just to see what it would look like in uh in your um you know, in your engine or whatever. Okay, so pr go into production quality and what we w probably want to do is turn on ray tracing, but uh le turn the ray tracing down to like 4. And then you're going to go back to common and turn this guy up to whatever your resolution, whatever your native resolution is for your screen, probably 1080. And just uh, leave it like that. You could change this guy as a file output. You can call it like JPEG if you want. Okay, and then let's go ahead and render. And you see now it's got a full screen render and you can see a little bit of the incandescent and the ray tracing. So let's go ahead and modify a couple things then. Let's turn it to like seven. Yeah, I'm not really liking the incandescent color too much. Turn the incandescent off. Let's do something like that. Okay, so that's a little better. So that's a pretty high quality render, and you see a little bit of ray tracing going on here because that's where it kind of curves and the light's bouncing off of that. Let's see what it looks like in the back. You see there, it's got like a weird, weird quality. So yeah, I probably wouldn't go um, so, you know, use uh, all this stuff too much. Oh, this is that's why this is a Lambert. That's why it's so dull. You have to change if you want any shine. You need to change it, but I can't because this is the stock color. So you might want to, if you want, you could go and uh, go back here and go into face and paint this selection and change it from a Lambert to a blend. The reason why is a Lambert doesn't actually have any shine. Oh, you can see it's doing a little bit of shine there. You see the shine there? And also, if you have a good PC, you could turn high quality on. Oh, sorry, that not texture is, uh, where did the high quality go? Let's go. Also, I don't know where the view cube went. It's kind of weird. There you can see a little bit of the Yeah, so it looks quite a bit better in this mode. I don't know what they do with the high quality mode. So 
some AA, anti-aliasing, all different kinds of stuff going on in here. Depth of the field. So here you can see, this is a simulation with lights. So this is, you're seeing what it would look like with, with the lights on. Actually, it kills the shine. So here you can see the shine but with this light for some reason. Okay, it won't let me select it. That's probably because I'm not in object mode. Let's go ahead, let's just delete this because we're getting towards the end of the tutorial. Yeah, so you see a little bit of shine here. And you see like a weird point and something weird going on down here. Probably because it's not completely because this is the this is the standard and then this is if we smooth it again. So this is one, this is three. So whenever you go into the into the picture, you're gonna see the three. You're gonna see the one, not the three. So it probably needs to be smoothed again, but don't smooth it again. And just saying that. Alright, so one other thing that I want to show you guys, and that is you go to window and outliner. Now I outliner is going to show you everything that's in your scene, which there was a camera, but I deleted it. And this poly cube is your entire spaceship here. So I wanted to go over, you know, uh, cleaning up and stuff. So here, make sure that you name all of your poly, all of your uh, surfaces and stuff. So here's a polygon. You can tell by the little image. And uh, so if you ever have any problems selecting things, go ahead and click um, this guy here. Uh, go ahead and go to the window outliner and you would be able to access that here. All right, so I just wanted to go over um, the the uh, hi uh, hypershade here. So that's under win uh, window rendering hypershade. And uh, what you do first is you create a bl you create your 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 surface. I'd probably go with blend or fog. Lambert's flat. You can't get it to actually reflect. So I'd go with a blend or fog. And then you could use the paint, and then you could use the the paint selection tool, and you could use uh, the reflection option there. If you double click on it, then you hit the X here to close it, and you could you know paint your selection to whatever you would like. And you hit B to change the size of the selection brush, and uh, then you could um, you go into the hypershade. So I'm doing just a recap here, really quick. Quick recap before we close it, close it out. And then you hit assign. You so you right click and you hit assign material to selection. What else? Oh yeah, rendering globals up here. So if you're just modeling, probably don't need to do the rendering globals, but those are here just in case you want to do. You know, hit this render button or whatever. And then uh, what else did I do? I did window outliner. And that's about it. So um, I was gonna say one other thing. Yeah. So save constantly on your um, every time you get to a milestone, save it so that you can keep your work. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and mess around with the colors. You know, get to learn that and try and learn uh, selecting this and messing around with your render globals and bringing stuff up and down and seeing what that does mess around with the lighting the uh, the create um, lights ambient light that will give you a, uh, an idea of what it'll look inside of a game engine or inside of whatever you're making inside Maya and uh, yeah so I guess that is it so this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials like thank you for watching this video if you like this video please Subscribe for more videos like it in this series and our series as well. I'm still looking for a reference book. Once I get it, it'll be in the description. And uh, if you have any questions, email me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace. Take it easy.